across. I'll give you examples in wraparound. Wraparound is what we want to use. Wraparound um, actually takes the, the, the undefined areas and flops it over and folds everything in. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as the offset, these guys here, you can let's see, you can slide this guy over, and you see what happens is you're actually just offsetting, you know, the whole image. So you're technically just sliding the image up and over. Um, for this particular exercise, what you want to do is you want to have the the horizontal and vertical offset half of your pixel um, of your total canvas size. So down here, if I can get it. My width is 500. My height is 375. So half of 500 is 250. So for example, my horizontal, I'm going to put in 250. And that divides it right down the middle. For my vertical, well, I'm going to go to my calculator here because I want to make sure this is correct. And this is a prime example of um, using the 10 pixel grid. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, so what is that? That is uh, 375. Okay, so if I go to my calculator here and I go 375 divided by 2, well, I get a decimal, 187.5. Now here's the deal. You can't divide pixels in half. So if I was to go to 187.5 and I go OK, pow. It tells me integer between negative 750 and 750 is required, closest value inserted, and it rounds up to 188. Now this gets back to the 10 pixel grid that, that uh, we were talking about earlier. Um, if you're designing a button and that button is 10 and a half pixels, you can't cut a pixel in half. So when you're doing the code and you're doing the CSS, you're going to have to make necessary adjustments to mess with that layout in the end. So it's a good idea, a very good idea, to make sure everything is easily divisible by 10. If it has a 0 on the end, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pixels, etc., you're golden. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to think about it. Um, it's what The problem starts when you get like weird numbers. Um, and you get decimal points because then you have to start making doing all kinds of crazy math and if you want to make a, a pattern for example to fit perfectly in your uh, in your layout and it's not going to work because you've got half decimals all over the, or half pixels half pixels don't work so there's my rant about that anyway so we're going to go okay so it's 250 by 188 eh, it's off by half a pixel and I'm doing this because I wanted to make an example of that 10 pixel grid so I'm just gonna say okay so then we're like we're golden here so now you see what's happened is that it's taken it's kinda taken the the chunks of images and folded them in and you'll notice that that the top of this image over here I'm gonna get rid of all this lovely stuff the top of this flower this is actually the bottom of this flower and this flower actually belongs on the top so these guys this flower here and that flower down there are actually the one, the same thing. They've just been like divided in half, and then their their positions have been transposed. Um, you know, one was on the top, now it's on the bottom, and vice versa. So over here, you got the same thing. Uh, you've got uh, you got this guy here. This guy used to be on the top. This guy used to be on the bottom, and this is the same flower. So. When we go in and we start patterning this stuff, these guys here on, on the very four corners, these are going to be the things that butt up against another duplicate of this, and so forth and so on. So everything matches, everything is perfect, everything just jives just really sweet. The problem is that you've got this seam in the middle, and this seam we have to get rid of, because if we make a pattern uh, right now, all you're going to see is this big huge square running all the way through so it's going to get really ugly and it's going to be really confusing to the eye um, and the deal is is that for every pattern you make custom pattern you make this treatment I mean the formula is the same you do your best to blur this seam out but how you do it is going to change so we're going to go over a couple different ones right now I prefer to use the clone stamp tool and that's that guy right there um, it does a really good job and it's my personal favorite so for example if I want to let's see I'm just gonna go in here and make sure everything's cool 
if I want to um, you know clone stamp and just kind of blur this area over here well first I've got the brush and then when the brush shows up that's actually the um, the, the stamper itself um, if I hit the option key it turns into like a little target that target is where I'm gonna pull the color from so if I want to target from I'm just for an example if I want to target this uh, this flower then I go over here and notice that my my clone stamp tool is now loaded with that color and wherever I move it's gonna follow and if I was to actually click and stamp down well you see it's cloning wherever my 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 uh, target cursor follows it's gonna clone it's gonna copy right over it's a real nice effect and it's a nice way to blur stuff out now I don't want to have this here because that's not the intended purpose of this exercise I just wanted to demo it just on something nice and bright to show you so I'm gonna undo that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to clone, let's see, something right around here. And I like to use a big brush just because it fills in nicer and it gives a nice gradient all the way out. And then I go over here and I cl option click again. I'm going to go up here, kind of blend stuff in. And I'm going to go over here on this side. And notice I'm kind of pulling from the areas that I already kind of cloned. And I'm going to go over here and kind of scooch across and maybe I'm just gonna go over here and the flower is gonna be filling in this area right here so you know we don't have to pay too much attention but it, it is nice to kinda keep it keep it nice um, and let's see maybe I'm gonna go over here the thing about using the clone tool or any uh, duplicating um, image duplicating tool is that wherever you go you're gonna start creating a pattern you see I've got a pattern running right through in this area I've got a dot here a dot there a dot there a dot there that's because I'm cloning one chunk and if I zoom out you can start to see the pattern so um, so then you kinda have to go back and fill spots in just to make it not so apparent and then I'm gonna go in over here and actually maybe I might wanna take no, I'm not gonna do that so that I can run over here and do that and take some chunks from over here and fill it down over there. 